Welcome to Beneath the Wing. Just like air passing over the wing of an aircraft provides lift, the people we meet can also give us lift in life by sharing their stories of strength and success, connecting us all. Beneath the Wing explores the stories of the men and women connected with the Minnesota Air National Guard's 133rd Airlift Wing. This special series is dedicated to our Airmen's first year stories. Hear from our wing's newest members, from enlisted aviators to electricians, aircraft maintainers to medics, and all jobs in between. These airmen have transformed from high school students to dedicated and involved members of the 133rd Airlift Wing family. In their own words, they'll share how they chose their military job, the connection they have with the team, and how they've changed from young civilian to American Airmen. I'm your host, Wing Command Chief, Mark Legvold. Welcome to Beneath the Wing. First year stories, I'm joined today by Airman First Class Travis, Travis Schmidt of the 133rd Civil Engineer Squadron. Welcome, Travis. Welcome, sir. How are you doing today? I'm doing really great. I'm glad that you were able to join us. Travis uh, joined the military in October of 2020 after graduating from high school that same year from Waconia, and you are an electric, electrical systems apprentice. Tell us what that does. Um, it all depends on where we're going and what we're doing, but uh, we can work on overhead power lines, we can work on underground, we can work on airstrip lighting, we can work on interior electrical work. And it's just a variety of things, and sometimes, depending on deployment, we'll help out with power generators as well. So if I was in my hometown and driving around, I would be able to see somebody that does your job? Yes, a form of it, because we do multiple things. We do alignment and electrical work, slash sometimes power generators, so we do a few different career fields. Okay, but pretty much an electrician? Yes, sir. When you left for basic training and then you went into the electrical systems, did you get any civilian certifications from that? Um, I got 38 college credits, and I think if I take my generals, I could get my associates in some type of field on that. That's fantastic. And all related to being an electrician, yes, right? Yes, sir. Well, let's, let's get us to where you are today. What brought you to the Minnesota Air National Guard? What brought me to the Guard was my brother. He was active duty, and he fell in love with it, and he said, Hey, come check out the guard one day when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. And I went, yeah, I'll come check it out. And I fell in love with it. It's like family here. Yeah, it, you're in a good spot. CE definitely has that family feel. You work with electricians. You work with plumbers, uh, structural people. What are the different jobs in CE that you work with? Um, you have WIFMs, which is basically a plumber. It's water fuel management systems. Um, you have structures. You have, um, which is just go ahead and build stuff like like sheds and like they'll build frames and stuff like that and they also do like concrete work. You have EA which is engineering assistance and they'll like kind of be your smart guys, they'll tell you what to do but then you'll actually do the work. You have your EM which is emergency management. You have your HVAC which they do, I don't be honest, they work on kind of a little bit of everything. Heating, ventilation, air conditioning systems. Yes sir. Yeah. Just like if I had to hire somebody to install an air conditioner in my house and yes. hire an HVAC guy. We've got those here in uniform too. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So your brother joined us and then inspired to you. Is he a much older than you? Uh, he's five years older than me. So right. he's 26 on 21. Okay. Did he go active duty before here? He was uh, six years active duty. Um, he met his wife in Korea and then he came back to the States for a year and then he switched over to the Guard. Yeah. So he was able to give you a little bit of insight on what to do he went active duty first and then joined the Guard. You just joined straight in here to the Air National Guard, right? Yes. Why did you choose this route? Um, I chose this route because I wanted to serve my country, but also stand at home and being a family man because family is everything to me. So I can serve my country on top of it, but I can also be around and make sure my, I'm here for my family. You, uh, you grew up in Waconia. Do you still live in that area? Yes, sir. I live in my uh, parents' house. All right. Still, still a home dweller. Yes. My father passed away recently, so, so I'm taking so care of the house. Sorry to hear that. And it's good that you're able, like you said, family's everything, right? Yes, sir. And you're able to help with that. Um, working in the electrical sector, what drew you to that job? Because when you join the Guard, uh, the Air National Guard, you get to choose your job first and then go to basic training. Is mm -hmm. that right? Yes, so you take an ASFAB, which is like a test, basically like the SAT or like the ACT, and then you basically take this test, see what you are proficient at, and then you go ahead and talk to the recruiter, and they give you what jobs you can pick. So I went electrical because I was a diesel uh, tech for a while. I did that when I was 14. I worked at my dad's shop, and 
I worked at a lot of other stuff. I did like epoxy flooring and then I kind of went, I don't want to be old and breaking my back and doing all this stuff. So I chose electrical because I can still do something with my hands, but it's a lot easier on your body. Yeah. It sounds like, I mean, you mentioned that your family also farms, so you're kind of used to working with your hands in yes. those trades. Um, somebody that's looking to go into a job where they're using their hands and their mind at the same mm -hmm. time, um, you could have gone to a local vocational technical school and instead chose the military. Are you getting the same kind of training here as you would have at a tech school? Yeah, at tech school I'm definitely getting the same amount of training. So you go to, um, when you go to basic, you, afterwards you go to tech school and the Air Force is, is actually like teaches you exactly what your job is, like my, so I, civilian side is two years for my tech school, but for me it was six months, so they do that and then you come back and you have on the job training, like I put in a LED light system and motor pool and stuff like that. So it's great. They give you college credits and you get on the job experience at the same time. It's awesome. It sounds like a heck of a deal. Okay. And you get paid at the same time? Yes, you do. You don't work for free here? No. I, I would do this job for free, but I'm glad you get paid. Um, when you, uh, you mentioned you had to go to basic training before all this. That's where you learn how to just be in the military, yes, right? Yes, sir. Uh, what did you do to get ready for basic? Because sometimes that's a, it's a scary thought if you grew up, lived at home, mom was always cooking your breakfast or dad was getting you ready for school and now suddenly you're joining the military and you're going to go someplace completely different and foreign. How did you get yourself ready for that both physically if you had to and emotionally? So thankfully I had my brother so he told me a little bit about it but if you don't you have a at least in the guard there's a student flight which tells you basically like what it's like what you're experiencing at least to a little bit and they try to like get you ready for that. On top of that, you can watch, of course, you know, some YouTube videos about people describing like what basics like and exactly you can do that and then kind of look up some of your own information. Like there's certain things like the Air Force song, Air, Airman's Creed that they're never going to change that you can definitely look up beforehand before you go in. I'm, I like to lift and work out, but if, you know, that's not really your thing, I would definitely lift and work out beforehand so then you're not getting... getting the crap rocked out of you because yeah. you're going to be running a lot. It's a lot of good exercise. It is. Uh, was it also a lot of time, you know, learning academically too? Yes, yeah, so there's a lot of time. So you have to take a test when you're at basic, basically just a knowledge test for like Air Force history, some like creeds and songs and like some other knowledge. And then I, there's a lot of like, uh, it's called uh, smart work, I think they called it. And you basically go there and like you go for, through your rank structure, your songs, you go through like who's your um, commander of the base, who's all that stuff. So. And so there's that test, and then there's a ton of other knowledge that they just do as well. Basic training lasted about six, seven weeks? I think it's two and a half months, about eight weeks, eight I weeks. think, something like that. Right. Got done, graduated, then you moved on to tech school so you could learn your job, right? Yes. Where was tech school? Tech school is at Shepherd Air Force Base, so it's two hours south of Oklahoma City and two hours north of Dallas, so it's right in the middle. Sounds like the middle of nowhere. Yeah, but you get some friends and you make some memories. Yeah. Uh, what did you enjoy most about tech school and learning your job? Um, what I learned, uh, what I enjoyed most about learning was definitely pole climbing. I enjoyed that thoroughly. Um, the best part of tech school is just making friends. I think my favorite memory was when uh, Thanksgiving we were away and we went hiking up in the mountains and our Thanksgiving meal was spam, baked beans, and Polynesian sauce mixed together because that's all we brought for basically the hike. <laughs> You're the second person on this podcast that's, that's uh, mentioned Spam as a good meal that they've had. Well, well, good for you. Uh, sounds like good memories. What was tough about that experience? Definitely being away from the family for a while. That was tough. Um, the Texas weather, it's hot all the time. It's the winter time here, and it's like 75 degrees there, and you are got to get used to it. <laughs> By the end of it, I was wearing sweatpants, and otherwise I'd be sweating. Yeah. You... Um, you were there kind of in the fall, which is, you know, really warm down there. How long was your technical school? My technical school was about, I think, about six months technically, but with holidays and stuff, it was more closer to seven months. Okay. And you came out of that, you mentioned earlier, with some college credit, correct? Yes. You came out with 38 college credits, which is phenomenal. It's actually a crap load. And I would ask a couple of my buddies, and they're like, yeah, for that short amount of time, that's a lot. Crap load. Is that a metric or a standard <laughs> measurement? I think that's standard. All right. I know we're switching over to a metric crap load, but that's that's all right. Um, when you uh, were in high school back in Waconia, uh, 
you, you mentioned your brother was in. Uh, you already had this kind of feel for the military, but you're still a high school student, right? And you're trying to figure out what you were going to do. Uh, then you come here, you join the Air National Guard, you make some friends, you go and do something completely different than a lot of your peers, I imagine, mm -hmm. going to basic training in a tech school. How's the Air National Guard changed you as a person? I've definitely gotten more mature. I know when to be goofy and when to be serious, that's for sure. I'm on time for most times. I definitely know how to wake up in the morning more. I have to be on time, and it's just made me truly, I think, personally a man, more of a man than I was. Yeah. Um, we do like to build good adults out here. Yes, we do. Uh, and you mentioned that CE, the civil engineer, is where all of our you know, trades kind of live. It's, it's a family environment here. Tell me why you think that. What makes it that way? Um, so recently my father passed away and I was getting constant texts and calls asking how I was, checking up on me. We do like potlucks where we have like a nice little meal and we'll like say some stuff and usually around the holidays and it's awesome. Honestly, it's a, it's a family environment. It reminds me of my family meetings that I used to go to when I was younger and people are always constantly checking on me and I'm always constantly checking on them and they're watching out for me. So you, you said you, you've matured a lot. It's made you more of a man, and you're part of this family here at CE. Families have a structure and a hierarchy, and you've been with us now for about a year and a half. Um, are you learning how to be a better leader by working here? Yes, I am. There's definitely multiple times where I've been asked to do some stuff by myself, and it's been kind of nice because my shop supervisor will kind of let me Sometimes you'll make me do stuff, of course, you know, that's just how it is, but sometimes it kind of lets me go and see how, how I do so that I can build that leadership skill. Yeah. Leading yourself is the first, first step in leading other people. Yes, it is. Which is a great thing. When you were 18, 17 in Waconia, did you ever think you would be, like, out on a job site just running yourself? Oh, I knew I'd eventually have to do something like that, but that baffles me of how far I've gotten. Yeah. A lot of electricians go through a pretty formal apprenticeship program, and it's kind of similar here, but mm -hmm. being able to work unsupervised and take your training and apply it and then have your work checked, it's just kind of part of that process. Were you ever nervous in those situations? I definitely was nervous, especially like when I was especially at tech school when I was there. I was super nervous because it's just it's a lot of information, and it's great, though. And if you're really interested in it, it's honestly amazing. But, yes, I was definitely nervous. But that's the greatest thing is I can ask someone about it if, if, to check my work, which is awesome. Yeah. In, in about a year or two, you're going to start supervising other human beings, which is kind of daunting. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you're going to be able to bring that experience of a little bit of that insecurity or the fear, and you can just share that with them and, and make it real for them. Mm -hmm. uh, all the lessons that you get to learn as a 19-year-old and Pretty soon somebody else is going to be 19 and you're going to be the old guy mm -hmm. uh, teaching them. That'll, that'll go a long way. So you've overcome a lot in your first year. Uh, the military has taken some good care of you. Uh, what's been the hardest thing that you've had to overcome as a part of your first year in? Um, Military-wise, it would probably be when I, I tore my pec. On military duty? Yes, on military duty. What were you doing? <laughs> I was actually, so what I was talking about when I was, I love pole climbing, mm -hmm. or well, AKA, um, so it's when I was doing a lineman segment, as I was down there in Texas and I was climbing, um, climbing poles for on the job train, we were putting up, um, we we're putting up power lines, we were putting up transformers and all that stuff, and I was climbing the poles, because usually you have a bucket truck, which then you go up in a bucket and you do that, but we had to learn um, how to climb with basically just a spike center boot, so like a mm -hmm. belt around that, and so you climb the pole, and when we did that, uh, what happened was, is when I kicked in, a chunk fell out, and I basically fell like wonky. And uh, of course, the safety stuff caught me, but when my arm did, they kind of twisted it weird, and then I tore my pack. I bet that was scary, being up up high, and suddenly you're, you can't really move the, was it the right side, left side? My right side. Right side. Um, how'd you get down, first off? I actually got down in pretty quick, I'm not gonna lie. I, I felt, felt like it hurt. So imagine like a bruise. You're like, oh, man, like whatever. And you got on the ground. You're like, oh, it's probably fine. And the next morning I woke up with everything like super bruised. And I go, yeah, I should definitely get that checked out. Yeah. <laughs> so you had to go in and see a military doc? Yes. Okay. In a military medical facility? Yes, sir. 
How was that experience? Because, I mean, you grew up probably just seeing your local hometown doc, mm -hmm. and now, you know, it's a little different in the military where we have our own medical technicians, we have our own doctors and nurses. Was it different? It was and it wasn't in the same sense. Like, they're kind of like, they're not CE, but they're definitely family. They're wearing the uniform, and they take care of you. They make sure you're doing good. They ask you well, how you're doing and everything. It was, it was a good experience. Yeah. I enjoyed it, actually. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, could you finish your training while you were down there at Shepherd, or did they just send you home because you got hurt? Um, I could finish my training. So, thankfully, I was part uh, done with my physical part of, like, the where everything was, like, heavy lifting and, like, all this stuff. So it's more of like we moved into more hands-on, like smaller stuff, so I could do it, thankfully. Otherwise, I would have to, I think I would have to get my surgery down there and stay down there for a little bit until I'm like healed up, and then they would finish me through tech school. So they would have taken good care of you physically and then yes. let you finish your training and then send you on back here. Mm -hmm. Once you got back to our base, back to your hometown CE family, mm -hmm. um, you've stayed here for a while through yes. your recovery, right? Yes, so I've been on orders probably for about almost to technically totally like a year and a half because I went through basic tech school on the job uh, training, which was like 60 days. I had like a month in between, and then I had my surgery. Great. And through the, all that time, you're putting a uniform on, coming in here, and doing some light work, not injuring yourself. Yes. But you also got paid to do your recovery piece, yes. right, physically? Which is awesome. They paid for my surgery and everything, and they made sure I was well taken care of. Yeah. And once you got back from your technical school, you also had more academic learning to do mm -hmm. here, right? Can you just explain how we, the the military, especially in the, the Air National Guard, get somebody from knows nothing about it, being an electrician all the way up to where you have um, achieved now? So basically, you, of course, you go through basic and tech school, and tech school teaches you the basic fundamentals. And then when you come back here, you do on-the-job training, which basically you have a supervisor watching you, and then he signs off on like a certain list of things you need to do in front of him. And then you have what are called CDCs, which is basically like a knowledge test that you do to make sure you get your um, five level. So when you come in, you're at a three level. You're basically like an apprentice, can't do anything without supervision. And I think it's technically a year, and then you have to get, of course, your CDCs done, and you're also your... Um, on the job training and after you, you can get your five level I mean you can get your um, you don't need any supervision okay did you get your upgrade training all the way up to a five level done sadly not I have all my paperwork stuff done and all that so I did my CDC's immediately I took I think it took me only like a week those are that. it's basically a online study course and you yes. take some tests and you can do it as fast paced as you can and I had a ton of time to kill because I had my surgery so yeah. I was I studied for like a couple of weeks and then I took the actual both tests only took about a week. But sometimes I've heard it taking a while, I've heard short, depends on who the person is. Mm -hmm. But it's, yeah, so I have everything done um, paper wise. I'm waiting for on the job training more, which is hopefully what um, coming up, we're going to be possibly going to Alaska and a few other things. So I'm hopefully going to be able to get on the job training for certain things done there. You get to go to Alaska. Hopefully, yes. All right, tell me about what you're most looking forward to when it comes to traveling with the military. I'm looking forward to going with a couple of buddies. Um, we have a couple guys from my shop hopefully going to Alaska, and we're going to be going up some power system um, up there, and it's going to be exciting. I think it's going to work. I think we're going to be taking a military flight, which would be awesome. It's kind of on my bucket list to yeah. get done. To fly on a military plane? Yes, especially because the lowest ranking airman and the youngest guy usually sometimes gets to sit in one of the pilot seats. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we do try to get them up there in the on the flight deck so they can learn a little bit about what those folks are doing up there and it, the view is fantastic. I, I got a chance to do that when I was a uh, airman first class as well early in my career. The plane is no longer flown by the Air Force. It's been <laughs> retired for many many years but you're you're at a great spot um, to be able to do that. Uh, other than Alaska, the military goes a lot of places. Mm -hmm. um, we do humanitarian missions as well as um, obvious uh, Department of Defense business uh, throughout the globe, where are you most looking forward to seeing if you get a chance? Um, preferably, I'd like to go to somewhere in like Germany and stuff like that, but I know we just got back from Japan, which I sadly had to miss because I had surgery and I heard that was a blast. And then I hear a couple of my other buddies, they've been to Japan, they've been to Germany, they've been to Italy. It all depends on what comes up. There's just crazy adventures and crazy spots that we go to for humanitarian efforts that I think is awesome that the Air Force does. And those are normally pretty short trips? Um, depending. Sometimes you get like a deployment, which is six months when you're gone. And I had a buddy that went to Germany for six months and did that. 
and then but the Japan thing was only like a couple of weeks, which is still awesome. You go usually it's in the summertime for our scheduling. You usually go, it's awesome. You get to go for Japan for a couple of weeks, come back, and then do your summer, do your job. That's awesome. A little yeah. break. Um, you uh, you were sitting in high school a few year a year and a half ago. A year and a half ago. 2020, I graduated. 2020, so uh, a little while ago now. Yeah, a little bit. But life has changed an awful lot for you uh, just in the last three years since you joined the military. What do you think life is going to look like for you in three years from now? I think I'll be a staff, and I think I'm going to hopefully have a wife. Staff sergeant? Yes, yeah, staff sergeant. All right. So you got prospects on getting, uh, getting promoted for sure. Yes. Okay. What's the other prospect? Hopefully a wife, someone to keep me busy, <laughs> and that hopefully I can have kids. Fantastic. That's a, that's a pretty aggressive three-year time, time yeah, clock. Yeah, the kids part is definitely, you know, maybe finding just a girlfriend, and I think just keeping my head busy and keep working is where I want to be at. Yeah, it sounds like you kind of took care of the, took care of the professional growth early in your, in your uh, uh, young life, mm -hmm. uh, your young adult life, and uh, now it's time to start moving on to other things. Um, which is just fantastic. Do you think balancing your military life and your work life and your personal life is gonna be a challenge? I don't think so. Work, I've never had bad bosses, honestly. Work's always been great with it. I tell them, hey, I'm gonna be gone for this amount of time. They go, all right, see you when we get back. And usually they're pretty happy when I get back. So ex explain to me this now. You, you have another job on top of being in the military. Yes, so I'm a diesel tech at Alliance Courier, which is in Bloomington. Okay. And how long have you been with them? I've been with them technically since I think 2019. All right. And they've been really good with just letting you go and be a part of the military and then coming back. Oh, they're phenomenal. They're like, yep, I'll see you whenever. And it's awesome and they're a good group of guys. So the relationships that you built here, plus your civilian career, you mentioned you got a ton of college credits done mm -hmm. and balancing all this has been easy or hard? I'd say easy, honestly, for me, being a young adult, and I can't imagine with, like, kids and families, I, but my brother makes it look easy, and he tells me it's actually really easy to do it as well with yeah. his job and everything. Has this place helped you get ahead in life farther than your peer group, you think? A hundred percent. If I, I, I'm not going to go to college, but if I was to go to college, I, my college would all be paid for. All my buddies worried about where the money's going to come, all this other stuff, and I go, hey, I already got 38 college credits. My college is paid for if I want to go. I got a job that I can guess what I get paid for at the same time, and it's it's phenomenal. Yeah, you, you sound like a, you'd be a great recruiter, and, and selling this place is, uh, is pretty darn easy if this is the right place to go. Have you recommended joining the Air National Guard to other people? I recommend it all the time. So the gym that I actually go to is right next to the high school. It's like basically connected. And there's a ton of high school kids that come talk to me about it, and I just go, hey, if you're interested in the military, I tell them a little spiel, because I go, hey, how do you, how are you going to pay for college? What are you looking for? What, what do you want to do? And I tell them a little bit about it, and then I've gotten a few phone numbers, and I've given them been to recruit from them about it. But I tell them all the time, it's, it's a great job, honestly. Fantastic. Travis Schmidt, you're a 12th generation Minnesotan. Yes, sir. So you've got a long line of people that have lived here in Minnesota. Um, have do any of them have military time other than your brother? Um, yes, my grandfather was in the army, my uncle was in the navy, and I got a few other relatives that I know of that are in the branches. I got, I think, my grandfather's brother died in actually in Japan when during World War II. Okay, oh, quite a history there. Yes. Thank, thanks for your family's uh, sense of service. Thank you for yours. Uh, Last thoughts here, Travis. I mean, you, you mentioned this is a great place to serve, a great place to be. Um, you joined for four or six years? Six years. Six years. Do you see yourself staying? Yes, I do. Why? The family aspect, honestly, and I think it's just great to be here. I love the people that I work with, and I get to see them once a month, and I wish I honestly saw them more. <laughs> yeah. It is kind of like a great big dysfunctional family reunion we get to do every single month. It definitely is. Yeah. After being here for as long as I have, I, st I still love Drill Weekends. And they're just a whole lot of fun and a lot of great people. And Travis, thanks for being a part of the future of that. We appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Travis Schmidt, Airman First Class at the 133rd Civil Engineer Squadron. He's an electrical systems apprentice. Thanks for joining me for our first year stories. And I hope that you tune in for our next one. 
As always, thanks for joining me on Beneath the Wing, where those connected with the 133rd Airlift Wing, Minnesota Air National Guard, share their stories of strength and success. We will be releasing a new first-year story each Tuesday and Thursday throughout the month of February, March, and April. If you think you are someone whose story could be a part of our Wings family here in Minnesota and are seeking direction for your next step in life, or you know someone who is, please explore our opportunities at 133aw.ang.af.mil and share these podcasts. If you're outside our local area but are still interested in serving in the Air National Guard in your state or territory, goang.com will get you started. That's G-O-A-N-G dot com. As always, I'd like to thank our public affairs section, especially Amy Lovegren, for her post-production and release work. I've been your host, Wing Command Chief Master Sergeant Mark Lightbold.